Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Pedro Alonso Lopez was born on the 8th of October 1948 in Santa Isabel do Lima Department in Colombia. The son of Benilda Lopez de Castenda, his mother was a prostitute and throughout his childhood he witnessed his mum working as a prostitute. He was the seventh of 13 children and when Castenda was impregnated with him, his father was married to another woman. He did not know his father as his father, Megdardo Reyes, was assassinated during an attack at a grocery store. He was assassinated six months before Lopez was born. The birth of Lopez coincided with the commencement of La Violencia, a 10 year civil war in Colombia between the Colombian Conservative Party and the Colombian Liberal Party, fought mainly in the countryside between 1948 and 1958, with an estimated 200,000 civilians killed, 2,900 soldiers killed, 1,800 police officers killed, between 3,000 and 5,000 conservative paramilitaries killed killed, as well as 15,000 rebels killed. The single parent family lived in a single room with curtains separating the children from their mother's prostitute activities, including seeing men abuse her. Lopez claimed that his mother was abusive and cruel. At the age of 8 in 1957, he was caught trying to molest his sister, which led his mother to kick him out. He then fled from Santa Isabel to Bogota where he was picked up by an elderly pedophile and taken to a deserted house where he was continually raped. Lopez became terrified of older men and slept in alleyways and deserted buildings, only meandering out at night in search of food from rubbish bins. Living as a street child, he joined a street gang for protection. The gang would fight others with knives and belts for food and places to sleep. They would also smoke bazooka, a type of cocaine. Three years later in 1960, at the age of 12, he was taken in by an American family and enrolled in a school for orphans. Running away at the age of 14 in 1962 after being molested by a teacher, Lopez lived as a street child and by the age of 18 began stealing cars and selling them to repair shops. He was later arrested for car theft at the age of 21 in 1969 and sentenced to 11 years in prison. Once in prison, Lopez was continually gang raped. While in prison, he made a shiv, hunted down his rapists and murdered three of them days later. As he declared that his killings were in self-defense, only two years was added to his sentence. As a result of the killings, Lopez gained respect from his fellow inmates and they did not disturb him again. Following his release, by the age of 30 in 1978, Lopez moved to neighboring Peru, where he claimed to have murdered over 100 girls, but this was never proven. His modus operandi was to kidnap young girls between the ages of 8 and 12 from poor rural communities. He had no racial preference but was more tempted by Caucasian girls. He refrained from targeting tourists despite being attracted to blonde haired girls as they were closely watched by their parents. He would stalk girls for an unknown amount of time in markets and on the street, abducted them, took them to a secluded place, raped them and strangled them. He would always kill girls during the daytime because he wanted a clear view of his victims' faces as they died. He would bury bodies in shallow graves in groups of three or four. Prior to them decomposing, he would return and have tea parties with the corpses. Lopez later confessed that for him, destroying childhood innocence, as he had experienced, was both natural and desirable, and by killing them, he was sparing them from a life of poverty and further abuse. He also later spoke to the media regarding the hedonism that he felt in committing his killings, stating, This is a wonderful moment, a divine moment, when I have my hands around a young girl's throat. I look into her eyes and see a certain light, a spark, suddenly go out. Her fingers flutter briefly. The moment of death is enthralling and exciting. Only those who actually kill know what I mean. Attempting to kidnap a nine-year-old girl in Ayachuanos, a province in south-central Peru, a native tribe stripped him of his clothes, belongings, and tortured him for several hours. Eventually, it was decided to bury Lopez alive, pouring syrup on his head and leaving him to be eaten alive by ants. An American Christian missionary intervened and convinced captors to allow the missionary to hand Lopez over to the local authorities. 
The tribe agreed, and this would have deadly consequences. The missionary drove Lopez to the Colombian border and let him go free. Travelling throughout Colombia and Ecuador, he continued his killing spree, killing up to three girls a week. Later in 1980, Lopez would lead police to a mass grave of 53 children and is believed to have killed as many as 240 girls in Ecuador. He is said to have liked Ecuadorian girls because they were more gentle, trusting and innocent. Police in Ecuador realised that there were more young girls missing but they put it down to sex slavery and trafficking and Lopez was not investigated. In 1979 a flood inundated Ambato, unearthing the remains of four girls who had been hidden in an unusual manner. Ecuadorian police quickly realised that they were dealing with a serial killer. Days after the flood, local woman Carvina Poveda went shopping with her 12-year-old daughter Maria Poveda at a local supermarket where Lopez attempted to abduct her. Local merchants rushed to help and subdued Lopez until authorities arrived. He initially refused to cooperate and despite police beating him, he remained silent, only telling them that he was a Colombian drifter. Captain Pastor Cordova told all police to leave and attempted to coerce Lopez with food and cigarettes. Ecuadorian police realised that they needed to utilise a different strategy and decided to call a priest, Father Cordoba Judino, who they hoped would convince Lopez to communicate. Judino arrived in Lopez's cell and Lopez began to confess. A disgusted Judino eventually asked to be removed from the cell, unable to stomach what was being relayed to him, and then told the prison authorities what Lopez had confessed to him. Lopez then took a police to a cabin where they found a nude dead corpse lying on a mattress which was identified as Ivanova Jacombe, who was reported missing. He then led the police to more than 30 shallow graves, but stopped cooperating and declared his innocence when he learned that he was going to be charged with murder. A total of 52 bodies were found, with many graves having been emptied by wild animals and floods. As a result, the majority of his victims were never found, but he pleaded guilty to 110 murders. However, in 1980, Lopez was convicted of only three murders, 300 cases of sexual assaults and strangulations, and sentenced to what was the maximum sentence in Ecuador at the time, 16 years. He was incarcerated in the Pavilion B section of Garcia Moreno prison in Quito, the capital of Ecuador. He was held in a solitary confinement and rarely interacted with guards. While incarcerated, he was seen as a model prisoner. Families of the victims offered a $25,000 reward if he was murdered in prison, but this never came to fruition. While in prison, speaking to the National Examiner, he described himself as the man of the century. No one will ever forget me. He was released on the 31st of August 1994 for good behaviour, having served just 13 years in prison. Followed by two escort vehicles, he was re-arrested one hour later as an illegal Colombian immigrant and deported. Lopez attempted to stop his deportation, claiming that he had gained Ecuadorian citizenship in 1974, but he was unable to produce any evidence. Brought back to his native Colombia, he was moved to El Esplina, where he was charged with the murder of Floralba Sanchez. Her mother, Alba Sanchez, claimed that she had seen Lopez walk away with a man who looked identical to Lopez from her home with Floralba's body found raped and strangled in an outside town. A quick trial found Lopez guilty of Floralba's murder. Declared insane, he was held in the psychiatric wing of a Bogota hospital in 1996. Lopez was diagnosed as a sociopath with avoidant personality disorder. On the 6th of December 1998, he was declared sane and released on a bond of just $50, under the condition that he continue receiving psychiatric treatment and report to police every month. However, he did neither and absconded. His last known location was El Espinal, where he knocked on the door of his mother, who gave him a few dollars and an old bed to sell for pieces. She never saw him again. News of his release caused hysteria in Ecuador, and it was rumoured that he was seen in the north of the country, however this was never confirmed. A search, location and capture request was issued by Interpol in 2002. His whereabouts are unknown. 
Victim's families believe that he was illegally executed as retribution for his crimes, while his mother believes that he is still alive, as his spirit has never been revealed to her, which has occurred when other close relatives have died. Sightings were reported to Interpol in Florida Blanca and Bucamanga in the Department of Santander in Colombia in 2010, but nothing came to fruition. In 2012, in the city of Tunja, the capital of the Department of Boyaca, Andrea Marcela Garcia Buitrago, the 12-year-old daughter of Maria Buitrago, a domestic worker, was murdered. Due to her age and appearance, the television program Chronicles RCN, literally translating to Chronicles RCN, broadcast on Colombia's second highest rated television station, RCN Television, hypothesized that Lopez was the murderer. However, this was never proven and Butigago's murder remains unsolved. The whereabouts of the monster of the Andes, and even if he is alive, remains unknown and may never be known. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment? It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet, and have an amazing day.